έκτακτη συνεδρία της Ακαδημίας Αθηνών. Αξιότιμη εκπρόσωπη του αυτού εξοχότητος πρόεδρου της ελληνικής κυβέρνησης, κύριε Υπουργέ Υγείας, κύριε Γεωργιάδη, σεβαστέ εκπρόσωπε του Αρχιεπισκόπου Αθηνών και Πάσης Ελλάδος, εδώ συμμολογιότατε πρόεδρο του Επροσβήτερα, πατέρα Ηλία Δροσινέ, αξιότιμη κύριε Υφυπουργή, αξιότιμοι κύριοι βουλευτές του Ελληνικού Κοινοβουλίου, αγαπητοί συνάδελφοι ακαδημαϊκοί, εντιμότατε εκπρόσωπε της αυτής εξοχότητας του πρόσβη της Τουρκικής Δημοκρατίας στην Ελλάδα, εντιμότατε πρόξενε της Τουρκικής Δημοκρατίας στην Ελλάδα, αξιότιμοι πανεπιστημιακοί, εκλεκτοί προσκεκλημένοι. Η Ακαδημία Αθηνών, εξέρεξε κατά τη συνεδρίαση της Σολομέλειας της 11ης Μαΐου 2023 ως ξένο ετέρο στην επιστήμη της ιατρικής στην πρώτη τάξη των θετικών επιστημών τον καθηγητή Μεμέτ Χαμπερά τον οποίο και σήμερα υποδεχόμαστε με ιδιαίτερη τιμή και ευχαρίστηση. Ο Μεμέτ Χαμπεράρ είναι ομότιμος καθηγητής γενικής χειρουργικής στο Πανεπιστήμιο Χατζέπτεπε της Άγκυρας, ιδρυτής της Τουρκικής Εταιρείας Μεταμοσχεύσεων και του Πανεπιστημίου, του Πανεπιστημίου Μπασκέντ. Η εμπειρία και η προσφορά του καθηγητή κυρίου Μεμέτ Χαμπεράρ στην ιατρική και δι στη χειρουργική των μεταμοσχεύσεων είναι λαμπρή και έχει λάβει πολλαπλές παγκόσμιες διακρίσεις. I have to say a few things in English. The Academy of Athens, during its plenary meeting on 11 May 2023, elected as Foreign Fellow of the Section of Physical and Medical Sciences, Professor Mehmet Haberal, who we welcome today with particular pleasure and honor in our midst. The varied scientific contributions and experience of Professor Haberal to medicine in general and to surgery of transplants in particular is exceptional and has received much recognition and honors all over the world. Professor Haberal's scientific contributions will be presented by our esteemed colleague, academician, Professor Andrew Jaiki. Η επιστημονική του πορεία θα παρουσιαστεί από τον ακαδημαϊκό κύριο Ανδρέα Τζάκη. Παρακαλώ, κύριε συνάδελφε, να προσέξετε στο βήμα. Ευχαριστώ. Σας ευχαριστώ κύριε Πρόεδρε. Ε, Παναγιώτατε, αξιότιμοι επίσημοι, συνάδελφοι, ε, ευχαριστώ που ήρθατε σήμερα. Είναι ιδιαίτερη χαρά που υποδεχόμαστε τον Μεχμέτ Χάμπεραλ, ο οποίος εκτός του ότι είναι πολύ γνωστός μεταμοσχευτής, είναι και πολύ καλός φίλος προσωπικός για τα τελευταία 20 χρόνια. Είναι ένας από τους επιφανέστερους χειρουργούς μεταμοσχεύσεων του κόσμου. Προς τιμήν του και προς τιμήν των αλλοδαπών προσκεκλημένων μας θα συνεχίσω την προσφώνηση στα αγγλικά. Έχει διανεμηθεί ένα ελληνικό κείμενο της παρουσίασης. Εάν θέλετε επιπλέον ε, αντίγραφο μπορεί να σας το δώσουμε και τώρα. For the benefit of Professor Mehmet Haberal and our non-Greek audience, I will continue his introduction to the Academy in English. He was born in Pazar, in the eastern coast of the Black Sea, just 20 years after the reforms of Kemal Atatürk the Turkish national leader, whom Professor Mehmet Haberal admires deeply. 
He attended the only grammar school of the town and helped carry the bricks to, br to build the high school, which he subsequently attended. In 1961, he entered the medical school in Ankara after taking a competitive national examination. He trained in general surgery at the University of Hasatepe in Ankara and continued with training at the Shriners Burn Institute in Galveston in Texas and then continued with training in transplantation in Denver in Colorado with the one and only Dr. Thomas Tarzo. Just a few years after our late, our own John Homatas completed his training. He became a master surgeon. He has since performed and continues to perform thousands of transplants. He has authored or co-authored more than 2,000 scientific papers. Dr. Stazo was his mentor. He once said that Dr. Stazo was his guide and inspiration. Dr. Stazo was also my mentor, my guide, and my inspiration. I will refrain from talking more about his life because Professor Haberal will talk us about the history of transplantation in Turkey. His life in transplantation is reflected in the history of transplantation in Turkey. Indeed, transplantation in Turkey is Professor Haberal's brainchild. Instead, I would just like to mention some of the most prominent distinctions which he has received. He received the Millennium Medal of the Transplantation Society and was elected a president of the Transplantation Society in 2018. This is the World Society of Transplantation, which represents all the transplant organizations in the world. He was elected Honorary Fellow of the American Surgical Association in 2003, the International College of Surgeons in 2005, the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow in 2019. In 2020, he was awarded the Cruz de Oficial, the highest medal of honor by King Felipe VI, of Spain. In 2009, he was named Honorary Fellow of the American College of Surgeons in absentia for the first time in the history of the college. And subsequently, in 2017, he received the Distinguished Philanthropist Award as an International Fellow, again for the first time of the history of the college. These are all rare distinctions and even more remarkable because they were awarded to the same individual. In view of the scourge of trafficking of human organs for transplantation, Haberal organized a world conference in Istanbul in 2008, which was widely attended and concluded with the Declaration of Istanbul. The Declaration of Istanbul is the guide according to which transplants should be performed with respect to human rights and human dignity. The Declaration of Istanbul is recognized by all transplant organizations of the world, as well as the World Health Organization. He organized the MISOT, the Middle East Society of Transplantation, and is the chief editor of its official monthly publication, The Experimental and Clinical Transplantation. Professor Haberal is an intellectual, an astounding proponent of justice. 
Defending justice, he referred once to three revered texts. First, the Quran, which teaches that justice is the order of the great God. Then, Alexander the Great, who asked his teacher, Aristotle, which is the greatest vir virtue of a leader, justice or bravery? Aristotle responded, where there is justice, there is no need for bravery. And then, finally, he referred to Socrates, who, were, when asked how is society surviving, he responded that the society survives with justice. Without justice, the survival of the society is unattainable. Indeed, Professor Haberal personifies all the qualities that the Renaissance defined as homo universalis. And I'm honored to introduce him to you as the new heteros of the Academy of Athens, the highest honor which the Academy bestows to non-Greek scientists. His presence in the Academy will reaffirm his friendship with Greece for the benefit of our people and our transplant patients. Thank you. Ευχαριστώ τον ακαδημαϊκό κύριο Τζάκη για την εξαιρετική εισαγωγή του ξένου εταίρου μας σήμερα. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Professor Haberal uh, to stand for the uh, uh, recognition of uh, him as a uh, foreign fellow of the Academy. Honorable representative of His Excellency, the President of the Greek Government, Mr. Georgiades, Minister of Health, most worthy representative of the Archibald of Athens and all Greece. Honorable representative of the government and Greek parliaments, Honorable Academician, Honorable Representative of the Ambassador of the Republic of Turkey of Greece, Honorable Consultant of the Republic of Turkey in Greece, and my dearest, very close friend, Andy Tsakis, and dear colleague, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen. And now, Actually, this is not my first visit in Athens. I came to Athens, I can't say many times, because uh, I'm general surgeon, transplant surgeon, and birth surgeon as well. I have really many of friends from the Greek and 
I came here many times. But uh, unfortunately, you know, I didn't stay longer. On the other hand, you know, my small town, my hometown, name also Athena. It is very, very important. And, you know, during the, my high school period, or the teacher of philosophy, they were teaching us about, you know, Greek culture, philosophy, and, of course, the Flatten, Aristoteles, and Socrates. You know, we are out in the Hippocrates, you know, out, because the you know, doctor, you know, should follow this. Well, Today, in my life, really, on historical day, very important day. You know, when I was in high school, I never imagined that in the one day I will be in Athens and, and also I, I will be elected uh, as a, you know, Academy of Athens founded by the Flatten, you know. I never imagined this, but today, really, it's happened. And therefore, you know, Andy, really, and all of you, I can't find any, any word to thank you all. You know, it's, uh, our region, our two country, you know, is very important. And if I am here today, as I received this prestigious award, I would like to express my gratitude to Atatürk, you know, the founding father of modern Turkey, to whom I owe my presence today. As final word, I am grateful for what Atatürk and Venizelos you know, had done for our nation and I'm really much hope that this will create the excellent opportunity for us to forge new this between our two countries. I'm sure that it's, uh, uh, it will be some way new door in between two countries. And I'm always saying that we don't need any other country. If we will cooperate with each other closely, we can do whatever we want, no question. And I'm sure that in the for future, we will do this and we will, you know, treat it not only, you know, as a chronic organ dissipation, you know, birth, any kind of cancer, and, you know, fortunately, at our university, we have any type of facilities. Therefore, you know, our relationship is really very important and we should continue to this. And, you know, it's, uh, I will in the, some way in the, summarize to you what I've done related to transplantation in my country, not only my country, actually our region as well. You know, it's, uh, I graduated 1967 from the Ankara University, and you know, then I joined the Hajitepe University. Hajitepe University, founded by Dr. Dora Machi, early 60s, and you know I started my you know the general surgery training like this. You know, this is 1968. You know, it's the first attempt of organ transplantation. Remember, you know, Bernard, you know, performed first heart transplantation. Then, 1968, two surgeons in my country, they just attempted to start a cardiac transplantation, but unfortunately, the patient didn't you know, live longer. And, you know, during the, my residency uh, period, I was, uh, you know, third year resident, 
one of our colleagues, you know, came from the United States, and we decided to do a liver experiment on pig, and then he left. Unfortunately, this project is really difficult. We couldn't be successful there. Then I continued to do liver transplantation on dog, and I, I was really successful. I didn't use, you know, any, you know, blood, you know, the transfer or something like that. And when I completed my general surgery in 1971, I appointed as assistant professor. And I already mentioned that I was also interested in general surgery, burn, and transplantation as well. At the time, you know, I the either my, you know, Mark student period and also, you know, the residency period, I was saying that everything can happen in the United States or Europe. I wondered, you know, I decided that I should go to the United States, see the United States. Is the United States really in the country in the sky or somewhere? And, you know, 1973, I went to Shriner Burn Institute. And I done experimental study and learn anything. And then at the time, Denver was the center, transplantation center in the world. All of the people related to transplantation are really coming to Denver. And already uh, mentioned in the Tzakis that uh, Dr. Elias Bostonius worked together. I don't know, unfortunately, I didn't, you know, meet in the, anymore, but he was there as well. And, you know, it's the, during the, my residency and, you know, med student period, whenever, you know, chronic kidney or liver patient applied to outpatient clinic, we're the same death, unfortunately. We don't do anything for you, unfortunately, a lot of patients die. But Tom Starzo, he made it, uh, Impossible to possible, no question. You know, first, if done really experimental study on dog, and then, you know, he performed really in the first in the pediatric disease transplantation, liver transplantation. Therefore, you know, when I completed my burn, you know, education in Galveston, then I went to Denver, and you know. It's, uh, Tom uh, worked together, and I stayed there exactly one and a half year. I went to Denver June 1st, 1974, and I stayed there exactly one and a half year. Left Denver June 30th, 1975. Then I asked Tom, you know, I decided to go back to my country. He said that, what are you going to do in Turkey? There is nothing there. I told him that, he said, thank you. I took the many things from you. I should go back to my country and I will try to do my best because we have at the Mari University, former university have dialysis center and I will do my best. And, you know, finally I came in the Hajitapi University and I performed first living related kidney transplantation. Of course, when I came back, except me, no one did have any information about transplantation. Doctor, nurse, technician, all people. And first I performed three experimental kidney transplanting dog. And I, you know, tested the people, say that, okay, this is the system. And we performed first, you know, it's, uh, this kidney transplant. At the time, there was no any legislation in my country. You know, I just talked to all people. And I realized that we have a lot of patients, but unfortunately, we don't have legislation. When I was in the United States, we were using this is kidney and liver, everything, you know, coming, you know, this is in the donor. But unfortunately, we didn't have, a, you know, legislation. Then I thought that I should all show the old people that, that patient kidney can be 
useful to treat the chronic kidney disease patient. And I apply, you know, it's the Eurotransplant Foundation in Leiden. And finally, you know, this uh, October 10, 1978, they sent me my kidneys. You know, till my operation, that kidney preserved only 12 hours. After, you know, I saw a research in the, on these kidneys, and I performed this uh, transplantation, and after that I realized that this uh, preservation time over 24 hours. And then I contact every center in Europe and the United States as well. I say that whenever you have kidneys, over 12 hours, please send it to me. And at the time, uh, I performed 122 kidney transplant. And I showed that you can preserve these kidneys over 100 hours. Like here, you know, these ladies, and uh, I showed Tom Sarzel. This lady's preservation time, 110 hours, 44 minutes. This ladies live with these kidneys 25 years. And, you know, then when I presented, uh, you know, this is the uh, first, you know, it's not meeting in Zurich. I will say that probably you will bring the kidney from grave as well. Now oh, that's it. Then I showed this. You know, all in the transplant center are sending to me kidney. They say that, why you are sending the kidney to you? If it is useful, they will use this as well. And I change, you know, literature. That's this. After this, I apply our general assembly. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, of course, before, you know, I talked to our religion leader and also media people. And, you know, it's, uh, finally, we got the old legislation. This legislation is very important, you know, especially, you know, it's, uh, Article 3, buying and selling organ, definitely forbidden. Unfortunately, today, still, this is the problem. And, except scientific organization, Article 4, Advertising of transplantation, definitely forbidden. And Article 15, of course, say that if someone applies transplantation against this law, they will give a lot of penalty. And of course, you know, I will continue work, you know, or religion leader. It, you know, when I talk first, you know, as our religion leader, they say that, how come? You know, I say that, what we are doing now, you know, after that, we are buried the people with their healthy organs. In contrast, if we use these organs, you know, we will do and save a lot of chronic organ disease life. And anyhow, I performed first domestic kidney transplant July 27, 1999, after just accepted this legislation, it was really important. And, you know, I continue all of this. Look at this down. This is uh, ladies, like this. Uh, this lady, she was a lawyer. And this young guy, he didn't have enough, you know, financial support. Three months later, after transplantation, unfortunately, I lost this patient, this young guy, because he didn't have, you know, it's enough facilities. Therefore, I thought that I should do something more. Therefore, you know, I founded Turkish Transplantation and Burn Tissue Foundation, 1980. Why? Is it because, you know, to help, you know, provide, you know, these people for treatment, you know, provide financial support and organize new dialysis center and so It was very important, you know. And 
And at the same time, I perform, you know, the experiment on heterotopic liver transplantation as well. Of course, you know, my, when I completed my kidney transplant period, my goal was to set out liver transplant as well. Therefore, you know, we addendum, addendum, you know, this own legislation. And, you know, finally, I found the dialysis center as well, belong to this foundation, foundation, okay? And, you know, I decided to construct a hospital, and I constructed this hospital. And uh, William Kauf, you know, William Kauf is, is pioneer in the dialysis machine as well. He visited my center and really helped me a lot. And finally, you know, I decided first, this is liver transplantation in Norwegian. It was a brain dead patient in December 8, 1988, I performed successful liver transplantation as well. And also I started, you know, this uh, organ harvesting, uh, still different from different city as well, because I started Ankara, but I thought that I should also, you know, bring the, you know, DC donors to different city as well. Uh, this is also theirs. You know, it's interestingly, when I was in Denver one day, one, you know, I can say 13, maybe 14 years old girl, send him from the Germany. They put it there, but unfortunately they say that it is not possible to do something. If you like, you can bring this patient to Denver. I prefer the patient. Uh, we brought the patient to the operating table. We opened this, we realized that a huge liver tumor. It is not possible to do something. Finally, we called Tom. He came, you know, he removed the almost, you know, three of, you know, three, two of three in the liver, and just small liver stay there. I thought that she's gonna die anyhow, but she lived, and she became ballerine, you know, with her and the husband. After this operation, I started to think that if, you know, this patient leave, is there any possibility to use left side of liver? And first I performed this, March 15, 2090. It was the first in Europe as well. It was the first successful. And then, of course, um, uh, my goal also applied to this in the adult patient as well. And this the adult father donated liver for his son and was the first in the world. You know, we have some patients, they have also chronic kidney and liver disease as well. And when I accepted this patient, I talked to mother. I say that, you know, this is possibility. If you will donate it, you know, left side of liver and also kidneys, your God. Lived. And, you know, I comes here, and finally I applied this operation. It was the first in the world as well. Additional, you know, I perform metabolic partial liver and this is transplantation, either you know this is donor or you know I'm living as well. But anyhow, November three, 1975, in April first. 2024, more than, you know, uh, 3,500 in the kidney transplant perform at the our institution. And also in the December 8, 1988, in April 29, perform more than, you know, 700 liver transplantation. And today, you know, I was the first, but today, AD transplant center over 50, liver, heart, lung, and pancreas, cornea, bone. Now, this is reality. After this, you know, I also decided, you know, to encourage our people as well. 
and I found it first in the Turkish Dialysis and Central Society, and I organized the meeting, and you know, and convinced the people. Two thousand nineteen eighty-two, George Abuna organized a meeting in Kuwait. And I realized that it's, uh, there is no any relationship, really right relationship between Meadows country. Therefore, you know, I decided to do something. I'm sorry. This. But anyhow, 1983, I organized a meeting, symposium. Dr. Tom Stasel, Roy Kahn, and many of my friends, we worked together in Denver. They also were in Ankara. It is, it is important. And finally, you know, I founded also Middle East Dialysis and Transplant Foundation. You know, it's, uh, and I organized the first meeting in Istanbul. At the time, you know, Iran and Iraq fighting each other. I organized a panel, and Dr. Ahad Gass and Al Khayyalo were sitting around the same table. This is a scientific, you know, uh, term. And then I thought that it shouldn't be go with the, over the foundation. I should change this, this foundation to society. And finally, you know, I found the Middle Society for Organ Transplantation. I also applied in the civil salon in Bern. They also, you know, it's assigned theirs. And uh, every two years, we are organizing a meeting in different parts in our region. And still, for instance, last year I was meeting in Ankara. Next year, Mezat meeting will be in Ankara as well. Therefore, I'm inviting you know, many of you to participate in this meeting as well. 1990, I found the Turkish Gentleman Society, and same thing. And in you know, November 2014, I was invited to Astana to start its pediatric liver transplantation. I went there, uh, performed first in the pediatric liver. I was asked that, is there any possibility to help more to, uh, you know, the Kazakhstan and this region? I told them that. When I go back to my country, I will find Turkic World Transplanter Society. And then, you know, it's, uh, I organized first meeting in Astana. And second meeting in Baku, and also third meeting, you know, so there's, you know, two days, you know, a lot of original people that came. First in Azerbaijan, you know, I, I was working in Azerbaijan, 1993. Uh, look at this, and Kazakhstan also, and I was the first kidney, pediatric kidney and first liver, and this guy, when I transferred him, he was the six months old. Now today, he is in the primary school. And we are you know, playing chess together. In Uzbekistan also, you know, I went to Uzbekistan and started, you know, pediatric and also husband to wife transplantation as well. And one day, two days, I performed, you know, to all transplant in the same day. Yes. And Kyrgyzstan as well, you know, it's this. And uh, this reality. Now, today, training, no, local health professional, education, public awareness, and international partnership is very important. Now, today, in our region, you know, male society, organ transplantation, Turkic World Transplant Society, and Turkic Transplant Society. Now we are working together and, you know, organize a meeting. This is reality. 
And now, unfortunately, I already mentioned that. You know, uh, there is a lot of patient, but unfortunately, there is no enough organs. Therefore, unfortunately, some country, you know, using transplant tourism and selling organs. It is unfortunate. And uh, look at here, you know, people, a lot of, you know, these poor people, they are, you know, it is very important things. Therefore, you know, our legislation, very important, what to say that, completely, you know, forbidden, selling organs and tissue and advertising forbidden as well. But unfortunately today, in some countries, some area is a reality. 1991, WHO asked me to have all legislation. Finally, they published this article and they say, no, you know, sell or purchase organs. This is very important. Well, you know, because of this, 2008, you know, after the May 2, it's uh, organized the International Society Transplantation International Affairs Society decided to organize meeting in Istanbul. I was host. I organized all of the activities in Istanbul. And, you know, it's, uh, a lot of people participated. And finally, you know, we published the Istanbul Declaration. Now I can say every you know, uh, transplantation meeting always Istanbul Declaration is very important about it, you know. It also is the pub, you know, it's in Rome, and also this uh, artificial academy of science of submit, you know, it's also the visit that, just, you know, that. What we can do at present, Living related transplantation, spouse and, and living, organ discharge, exchanges, and this transplantation is very important. I'm always, you know, saying that in the possible solution. Of course, expanding funding resources, establish national organ procurement center, encourage on organ sharing, network and registry, address social and religious concern of the public, eliminate commercial transplantation and transplant tourism to the you know, state section. It is very important, really. And, you know, this, uh, this uh, I'm always saying that, and a lot of people, once again, dying with their healthy organs. Unfortunately, a lot of chronic organs, especially, need the healthy organs. Therefore, we should encourage this transplantation. It is very important. And, you know, the September 14, 1993, I found Washington University. And I started this and summarized to you this is the Orphan Hospital. And, uh, you know, this is our campus. I'm really inviting all of you. This is our library. You know, it's uh, that's, uh, the England, you know, the thing, and the Royal Society of Britain, they invited me to their center, and uh, they, you know, gave me the distinguished fellow. They showed me their library, and they said that this library capacity 600 books. 6,000, 600,000 books. I said, fine, our library, more than one million book capacity. They say, oh really? Yes. Is it possible to see? Of course, you can come see. I think, you know, I'm also inviting all of you. This is the old library at their campus. And we have orchestra, Orchestra Academic Washington. I started with two people, believe me, two people, now today, international orchestra we have. We have research center, you know, we are not in, in Ankara, we are Istanbul, we are Konya, we are Adana, Alanya, Izmir, we have now more than 10 hospitals. For us in Adana, now we are completing the fourth hospital. 
oncology and hematology hospital. It will be open in the future. And we have very good, you know, animal breeding resource center. And I would say we have pig, we have rab, rabbit, we have rat. Therefore, you know, whenever some of your colleagues like to do research, they are very welcome. They can come. If they like to use the pig, there is pig here. They like to use the rats, there's a rat, a lot of rats, and rabbits, a lot of rabbits. That's the reality. No way. And also we have dairy product. You know, it's all belong to everything, Bashkent University. Everything, you know. And you know, we have two hotels. One is a thermal hotel. I'm really inviting all of you to stay there, you know, it's a thermal hotel. You know, it's uh, really just the middle of forest. Really good, you know, you can stay there. there. Um, and we have television channel. Channel B, this is also international channel. Not the, okay. And, you know, then I found this university. Believe me, you know, many days I stayed without sleep. You know, I was thinking that how I will run this university. One day, one of the, our teachers came and presented, you know, 1994 at the time. He mentioned the quality. I said, okay, my goal is quality. Bashkin University equal quality. That's it. Or it's either, you know, healthcare and also educational whole system under the control of our quality system. No way. We have excellent team. They are working. We are controlling all of the system. And today, more than, you know, 10,000 people working with us. And, you know, it's uh, a different place. And already mentioned, you know, that is uh, Transplantation Society, till my presidency period, meeting or organized either United States General, general or Europe. When I became the president, I say to our colleague that I think we should change. We should organize it, you know, this scientific meeting, regional. And first region will be our region. And 2022, 29 meeting was in Buenos Aires. During the closing, I was the chairman of scientific committee. And during the closing ceremony, you know, I went, you know, to take the you know, microphones, say that, okay, this is the 39, 30, I mean 29, 30 will be in Istanbul. Now everything already organized. This meeting will be Istanbul Congress Center. Everything already registered. And, you know, it's, uh, I'm also inviting all of the, all of the colleagues transplant calling. But if something happens, additional, <coughs> additional, Turkish Airline will be carrying travel, and they, you know, decrease, you know, business, you know, take it 20%, and economic it 15%. Additional, I will talk to the mayor, you know, I will provide during the meeting any kind of facilities for our colleague. You know, this mayor will provide, you know, just if someone like to go to a different place in Istanbul, they will, they will go there they freely, no way. Everything ready. But in summary, you know, it's the reality today. We have a lot of chronic organ disease patients, but unfortunately, we don't have enough organs. Actually, organ donation, not organ donation, this is life donation. When, you know, we operated the patient, first thing, chronic disease patient, patient life changing on the operating table. 
when completed the uh, uh, transplantation, kidney starting, you know, working on the operating table. Same thing for liver. Therefore, what we are doing, we are donating life. We are not donating, you know, organs. Therefore, you know, I will mean, well, think all of human beings is, you know, donating life. And once again, thank you all, Mr. President, Mr. Minister of Health, and this, this all, you know, religion is there. And and, these, and and all of the you know colleague here, I cannot find it really. Believe me, anymore to thank you all because you know. Then, then, but we should cooperate closely with each other, very closely work together. We don't need any other country. Fortunately, we have any kind of facilities. No way. I don't want to, you know, any excuse. If someone like to do research, I'm saying that, okay, please come. And additional, I provide at least 100 people for free registration. At least 100. Already say, no, you know, I provide this as well. Therefore, you know, if you need anything else, just let us know. This is the origin. No way. You know, why in the past Atatürk and Venezuela, what they have done, uh, we should do exactly similar thing. If we will help each other, and if we work together, we'll solve any kind of problem. No way. And once again, thank you all. No way. Of course, you can ask me any kind of question. Any kind of question, you can ask me. Yes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hadra. Um, thank you for the wonderful talk on the history of transportation uh, and uh, moreover of building an entire university community during your career. The Academy of Athens welcomes you with pride and honor and offers its best wishes for the continued, continued success of your pioneering work. Αξιότι με κύριε καθηγητά σας ευχαριστούμε για την ενδιαφέρουσα ομιλία σας Η Ακαδημία Αθηνών σας καλωσορίζει με ιδιαίτερη τιμή και σας απευθύνει θερμές ευχές για την επιτυχή συνέχιση του έργου σας. Λύεται η συνεδρία. <Κι>